Hi, everybody. It's good to be with you again, to pray, to fast. And really, it's a joy to gather together in Jesus' name, to listen to his word. The title of our devotions today is Hang On. Hang on. Keep hope alive. Do you say these things from time to time with someone who's losing hope? Do you say, hang on? For some of you, probably, you're using the term kulang, cool, okay? Cool, hindi kulang, cool. And yes, it's true. We have different words to say it. See, the lessons that we can practice from the message last Sunday entitled, Never Give Up Hope, is enormous. Many people today want to give up. Would you agree? Many people want to give up because of the many circumstances they are experiencing. But rather than give up, the message last Sunday centered on what we should do. Refocus our minds from suffering, but to keep our eyes on Jesus and his glorious promise of eternity. Yes, we are reminded that we need to refocus. And we need to teach people to refocus when they're suffering. The second one is respond in love. This is our response. Respond in love, prayer, hospitality, as we represent Jesus Christ in this fallen world. Rejoice in suffering for God's glory, knowing that we can find joy in him alone. How true it is. We can find joy in him alone. Let me draw your attention to 1 Peter 7 and 8. This is where I will focus our talk today. Verse 7, the end of all things is near. Therefore, be of sound judgment and sober spirit for the purpose of prayer. Above all, keep fervent in your love for one another because love covers multitude of sins. Peter's emphasis on hope and the glory of God ought to encourage us to be faithful today in whatever work God has given us to do. If you want to make the best use of your time, live in the light of the return of Jesus Christ. The Lord wants us to hang on, for we are headed to spending eternity with him, our creator, our savior, to see his glory. For Christ's return, this verse comes to mind. I'm sure many of you have read this from time to time, but I'd like to remind us again. John 17, verse 24. This is Jesus praying. Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, be with me where I am, so that they may see my glory, which you have given me. For you love me, before the foundation of the world. Now, this talks about eternity. This talks about the future. And I pray that we are encouraged today. We are with joy because we know where we're going. And I pray also that we speak of it to many people who are scared, who don't know where they're going. What do you and I do at this time? Do we share the gospel or do we just keep quiet? See, the term watch and pray had a special meaning to Peter because he went to sleep when he should have been watching unto prayer. Mark 14, 37 to 40, this is where we find this story. And he came and found them sleeping. This is Jesus. And said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Keep watching and praying that you may not come into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to answer him. Let me share with you the application of the verses that we just read in 1 Peter chapter 4, 7-8. to 8. 
This comes from an actual experience with a friend of mine who I've been sharing the gospel for more than 30 years. Maybe some of you have the same story to tell. But let me share this because this is an ongoing experience. This is happening today. This is not something that happened many years ago. It's happening today. Sharing Jesus with him was easy because he would respond by saying he knows Jesus because of the religion he grew up in. And many times he would joke around and really he wasn't serious about what I was sharing. He would show me what he carried in his pocket, which he found comforting. And other rituals from the predominant religion, he would follow like praying to saints and others which he was taught through the years. Never did he argue with me, but he would still do the same things he got used to, like cursing and criticizing people who he thought were the worst sinners around. Well, one day, I believe three weeks ago, this friend of mine calls me up saying he was in extreme pain. I inquired why, and he said he fell while going to the toilet. For a 75-year-old, you can imagine what he was experiencing. It seemed he broke his hip and many parts of his body. This was the start, or should I say, the restart of sharing the good news to him again. This time, he was more attentive to the Bible verses that he said was speaking to him. I made him focus on Jesus and on Jesus alone. Sharing with him the CCF's God's way to heaven and reading the principles and verses slowly seemed to make sense to him. As I shared with him the prayer of acceptance, he joined me in praying aloud. Aloud. For 30 years, I have shared the very same truths with him from time to time. And it was only now he was responding quite well. I believe that God uses circumstances to catch up or to catch the attention of people. God never gave up on this friend. But let me be honest with you. I almost gave up on him. I told him that a few nights, nights ago, and he thanked me for not giving up on him. I said, God never gave up on you. He was crying. He was crying as he realized that God was always there for him. I also noticed that when we would meet again the next day via messenger, he would tell me what he learned the day before. I was amazed that he remembered quite well for a man in pain. Had it been easy taking time out to have a conversation with his friend daily? I allot one hour a day every afternoon, sometimes a little bit more. And at times he would say, I give up. The pain is just too much to bear. I'm asking God to take me already. And I can feel it. I can feel that. I would tell him, hang on. Hang on. God has a purpose in your life. His comfort, this friend of mine, his comfort now comes when we start to have a short devotion. And then we pray. I have to keep on teaching him the assurance of salvation so that his mind is saturated with Bible verses. And what gives him comfort always through the last three weeks or more has been constantly our prayer time, seeking for God's intervention, healing, and comfort. And he would never stop by saying, Vic, please pray for me. Please pray for me. My dear friends, prayer is truly important to someone who is in that situation. Prayer is a way to get through them. What am I learning from this experience? First Peter chapter 4, verse 8 tells me, Above all, keep fervent in your love for one another, because love covers a multitude of sins. Many Christians today look forward to Christ's return. Are you? I pray that we all are. He may come anytime. I don't know when, but he will. 
Warren Wiersbe says this, if we really look for the return of Christ, then we shall think of others and properly relate to them. Love for the saints is important above all things. I realize that in these times of persecution and testing, times that you and I don't need, don't know anymore, there's, we have lost hope. Christians need to love one another and be united in heart. We need to share what we believe in. We need to give hope to many who are losing hope. We need to do that. True love also does not condone sin. And we need to help the other person to understand how serious sin is to God. This friend has to learn a lot about how serious sin is, which caused Jesus to die on the cross to pay the penalty of sin. He grew up in a world wherein there are various categories of sin. And today he realizes sin is sin. For all have sinned and all fall short the glory of God. He now realizes that. And this journey, I believe, God has orchestrated so that this man will have a personal relationship with him. God is teaching me, me, to persevere and to show my love for this friend, even if it is difficult. This story continues. As I mentioned earlier, it continues even now. And I pray for God's divine intervention in his life. The most important of all is that he will have a personal relationship with Jesus. It is amazing on how God is just orchestrating all these events. And I can see this man change. Praying. Depending on Jesus alone. His prayer is different today. His focus is different today. And I can see transformation. But I believe that there will be more to come. And God will use this occasion to teach me and to teach all those that I've shared this story. Let me share with you some reflection points. Number one, are you in a similar situation? What have you done to encourage another person to hang on even in suffering? Number two, have you gone out of your way for a friend who has rejected the gospel in the past? And you persevere to continue to share today. You don't stop. Number three, how do you show your love and hope for another, whether a believer or a non-believer? Let's have a few minutes of just reflection on these three points. And then we will pray. Let us pray. Oh, Father in heaven, what a joy to pray. And we thank you that you answer prayers. Lord, we lift up to you our concerns, our times of difficulties. Oh, Lord, you are the one that speaks to our hearts. You know what is the individual's 
hearts crying out all day at times, seeking your will for each and every one of us. You have comforted us in your word in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for us. Lord, we realize that, that you really care for us. With the pandemic raging in our midst, we seek your comfort and safety. We ask that you keep us safe in our homes, protected by you and you alone. We know that you will give us peace and good health, not only for ourselves, but also for our family members and friends who are today maybe in hospitals. We pray there will be room for them to be attended by doctors and nurses. We also pray in Jesus' name that they are healed. May the God of hope be a reality to us all. And the reason of our hope is Jesus, no one else. Many times we are to be reminded that if we ask anything in your name, Lord, I will do it. That's what you say. Oh, Lord. The Bible tells us also that now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord, thank you so much. Thank you so much. You give us hope. You give us joy. And you give us the means to love others who are in situations far worse than we are. And Lord, we pray for them, each and every one of them. And I pray for this friend of mine. I pray that you will speak to him every minute of the day. And that he will respond because your spirit is in him. We pray for many who have lost their jobs and will depend on you for provision because you are Jehovah Jireh, the God who will provide for his children. Dear Lord, please bring the right opportunities for our brothers and sisters who will experience your abundance. We thank you for our prayer time every week and intercede weekly. We find peace and comfort as we pray for each other. And we are excited for all the answered prayers that will be experienced because you have promised us, if you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Lord, thank you for the joy of prayer. Thank you, Lord, that there is really hope in Jesus in your son alone and we take comfort in that and we rejoice we rejoice for we pray all these things in jesus name and for his sake and god's people say amen, amen. and amen amen praise god that was a very beautiful and gracious reminder to encourage others to hang on the experience of Pastor uh, Vic and his per perseverance, imagine, for 30 years and it's still ongoing, just teaching us to be fervent in prayer in, and in also showing our love to others, even when it's difficult. Now, let us continue to persevere in prayer, uh, prayer for our country, for our families, uh, for our church, and for ourselves. You may now chat your prayer request. And prayer point slides will be flashed on the screen so that it will guide you. Now let's enjoy our intimacy with God. Let's pray.
actually come before the presence of the Lord. Heavenly Father, thank you, thank you, thank you for this sweet hour and time of prayer. Indeed, Father God, we can bring all of our prayers, thanksgiving, request, and our pleadings to your holy throne. And thank you, Lord, according to your timing and your will, you will answer our prayer. Father God, thank you for Pastor Vic, as he reminded us through the devotion that we should not give us hope in ministering to people. And we should always hang on to you, Lord, and continue on in serving you, in serving those that have entrusted to us. Help us, Lord, to really refocus our attention on you, Jesus, and not on our situation now. Help us really, Lord, to respond in Christ-likeness, in love, in prayer, hospitality, and service to others. And help us really to rejoice in our current situation, even in suffering for your glory. Lord, we especially uplift each one of us, Lord, especially those who are sick and even with COVID, Lord, that you will be gracious and merciful to us. You heal us from our illnesses, and even from those who have been struck by COVID virus. Lord, we pray, Lord, that this pandemic will be controlled and be eradicated soon, Lord. We pray, Lord, for the Philippines, Lord, and all around the world, as people are being vaccinated, Lord, we pray, Lord, that there will be enough supply, Lord, so that, Lord, we'll be protected. But, Lord, we don't only rely on vaccines, but most important, Lord, we rely on you, Lord. Lord, help us, Lord, especially in our spiritual life, in our mental health, because, Lord, many are discouraged by many different, many different kinds of reasons, Lord. Some economic reasons, some financial, some relational, some other things, Lord. But, Lord, may you be our strength and help, Lord. May we be able to call upon you and even our friends and loved ones who do not know you, Lord. May you use us to be a channel of blessings to many people, Lord. Lord, we especially pray for the prayer request, Lord, that those in the chat box, Lord, you know who they are and what are their requests, Lord. We pray that you are going to answer their prayer according to your will and timing, Lord. Lord, we uplift into your hands, Lord. Our church, Lord, CCF, Lord, we have various trainings, Lord, for our spiritual strengthening and for us to be able to minister and to fulfill the great commission and great commandment. We pray for the Go Viral movement, Lord, that you will continue on, Lord, until you come. We pray, Lord, that those who have attended the phase one training on April and May, they will be able to apply and be able to fulfill the assignment, Lord, to be able to form groups of at least five new believers. And Lord, we pray that in August, many will be able to join phase two, then phase three, then phase four, so forth, Lord. We pray for the D leaders assembly on June 19, Lord. May, may all the D leaders be together and to be encouraged by Pastor Peter. And we will also, all D leaders, Lord, will do go viral, Lord. That, they, that they, we will do rapid multiplication and rapid um, growth, Lord. So, Lord, may you bless your ministry, Lord, through the CCF movement. And Lord, we uplift into your hands also, Lord, our satellite churches, our not only in the Philippines, but all around the world, and even our IMPs, International Mis Mis Ministry Partners. Lord, we are all fulfilling the Great Commission and the Great Commandment, Lord. Lord, may you bless each one of us and bless our families, Lord, that all of us will be able to have the strength, the wisdom, and the faith and obedience to do your will. We pray for this Sunday's message, Lord. We pray for 
Brother Paul and Pastor Bong, as they give the message, may all of us be strengthened and may each of us continue on to love and serve you, to have the hope that comes from you, Lord. Lord, we especially thank you, Lord, for Pastor Rick as he celebrates his birthday today, Lord. Lord, give him multiple blessings, Lord. And strengthen him and use him mightily for your glory kingdom and purpose lord as you add years to his life lord lord give him comfort lord give him strength lord and lord we uplift into your hands each one of us again lord you know each of our struggle you know each of our problem but lord thank you lord that through this prayer meeting, Lord, we believe, Lord, that help is on the way and that you're going to help us, not only us, our family, but the movement, Lord, the, the, our friends and loved ones. So, Lord, we thank you. We adore you. We praise you because you are God who listen to our prayer. This we pray. In the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ and all God's people say, Amen and Amen.